Good morning, church. Welcome, everyone, to the second Sunday after Pentecost worship service. Today's Father's Day. <laughs> we have a you know church members who is uh, taking a, a vacation this week. You know, they are all gone out there enjoying the nature. <laughs> but here, we have a wonderful fathers and father figures with us today. I would like to bless all fathers on this day. So would you stand those fathers or father figures Give big hands for them for what they have been done for. Thank you, thank you, fathers. <clears throat> Join us after worship for pops, popsicles <laughs> for pops on our front porch after worship to celebrate Father's Day. Thanks. Uh, to the nurture team preparing the popsicles. Peggy and David and I came back safely yesterday afternoon from the Virginia Annual Conference. We are going to present the conference uh, information to the congregation uh, sometime in the near future, though I requested Peggy to share a brief report later in the worship service. David and I are going to take a vacation for the rest of the month and will return on July 6. Uh, thanks to David Williams and Chris Howell who are going to fill in for me in the next two weeks. We have, a, uh, we have a visitors today. Uh, everybody in this room knows know them, right? <laughs> Allison Wilkerson and Byron Jr. Wilkerson. Let's welcome them. Thank you for visiting us. I heard that you, uh, Byron Jr., you have grown uh, your teenage years in our church. So is there anything changed since? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> and Jonathan and Elizabeth uh, Davis, two children, wonderful children. They are going to do the good uh, presentation today. And Vicky Shackleford, wonderful to see you, Vicky. You doing okay? Oh, so glad that you recovered, you know, well and joined the worship. Thank you. Thank you. Altar flower is given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Nehu Pearson Jr. by his son Nay Pearson on Father's Day. Now let us gather, gather our hearts, minds to worship the Lord in spirit and truth as we welcome the light of Christ.
rise for the call to worship. We come as children of God. We come unsure where to seek God's presence. The wind blows. But God is not in the wind. The earth quakes. But God is not in the earthquake. The fire burns. There is nothing but utter stillness. God is there in silence. In silence, we will wait for God. God is with us now. Visited. Let us pray the congregational prayer. Come, O oh God, be with us today here, as much as a deer longs for streams of cool water. We long to know that you are with us. When trouble and sorrow come, we need you. Help us remember that. You are always with us, and that your love is steadfast. Put your song into our hearts, that we may praise you this day. Amen. Let us bow our head. Almighty God of all creation, we join our voices to praise you today singing of your wonders, giving thanks for your grace and care, and celebrating the joys of a life you have blessed us with, family and friends, new relationships and deeper relationships, new life and transform the lives reconciliation and restoration. On this day, we are especially grateful for the gifts of fathers, the gifts of being a father and fathers that we miss. We thank you for the many ways that our fathers have shaped us for their example and their love. Yet, 
We also pray for those who have painful relationships with their fathers, those who are estranged from their fathers, and fathers who are estranged from their children. And God, we pray for those who are unwilling or unable to accept the responsibilities of fatherhood. Bless all our church members, whether they are home or away, with various reasons, with your love and grace, so that we may continue to live a safe and healthy life during this difficult time. We love you, Lord. We want to praise you and worship you, Lord. We know that you will be glorified by our, by our worship, whether online or in person. Come, Holy Spirit, upon all who worship you at this moment. We want to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit now. O oh, come, Holy Spirit, O oh, come. We pray all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, uh, you know, today Jonathan Williams is with us. Would you come forward? And he has been graduated from his high school, and he was a 2022 20, valedictorian. What a wonderful, and we are so proud of you, Jonathan. We asked Jonathan to give his little speech. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for inviting me to speak today. Um, I think that I graduated last Friday night. Since then, I, I need to drive around with, you know, when you get married, you have the just hitched. I need to have the just graduated and the cans to announce my graduation. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, Centenary family, for always making Elizabeth and me feel so loved when we came. We, we always feel like celebrities when we come, and I, it's a reflection of the just the great amount of love that Centenary shows their guests and their visitors. Um, it's always a joy playing the piano or reading scripture. Usually the way the week goes is that we figure out when we're going to come and maybe Tuesday night dad will call me to ask me to play and then Wednesday night it'll be asked to read a scripture. So, uh, And then Saturday it'll be speak, you know. Um, but uh, no, it's... <laughs> Uh, but it's always a joy to do that and to, to offer our gifts. Um, in the fall, I will be attending Hillsdale College in Hillsdale, Michigan. It's a small Christian liberal arts college. Um, very excited to go there. I'll major in philosophy and religion and attend seminary after and pursue a career in the ministry. I uh, will leave August 19th. So hopefully we can come back and visit um, before August 19th and make every effort to come visit in the, in the future years. So thank you very much. So when you come back, another singing, playing piano, reading the scriptures, anytime, okay. Uh, Peggy Harper uh, going to give us a brief report for the annual conference. Uh, 
Good morning. I did say that this would be brief. David, Michelle, and I attended annual conference, uh, David and I as at-large delegates and Michelle as our clergy person. Um, we had wonderful preaching and singing, and it was so good to be together as a body. There were some tense moments. What would it, an annual conference be without those moments? We did have some things that happened that are exciting to announce. The by district initiative was passed. As you, you, maybe last year, the year before, the cabinet was reduced from 16 superintendents to eight superintend district superintendents. And each district superintendent had two districts to handle. The by district initiative that has occurred has set a goal for all of the districts to merge their offices into one by December 31 of 2022 or January 1 of 2023. The Lynchburg district is merging with the Danville, Danville. Danville district and will be known as the Mountain View district. You'll be hearing more about this in the future as we'll be having meetings. They'll be combining all the boards and making this ministry work hopefully in a streamlined way that we will be more effective in ministry. In the future, we as a congregation will be having meetings, not to necessarily talk about disaffiliation, staying with the Methodists, going with the, with the global ministry, but to educate ourselves about what is happening in our conference and in the United Methodist Church today. We ask that you pray for our bishop, pray for our congregation, and pray for the United Methodist Church as a whole as we address these issues and look forward to what will happen or may not happen at our next general um, conference. Thank you. It is time for lifting up our tithes and offerings to the Lord. So Jonathan Williams is going to play a piano for the anthem. <clears throat>
generous God, you are always with us, always caring for us, always drawing us together. We are so grateful for your loving presence. We bring our gifts before you today that this offering may reach out in love to your people everywhere. Amen. Now you may be seated. <laughs> Elizabeth, would you come for the scripture reading? Today's scripture reading comes from 1 Kings 19, 1 through 14. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed the, all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also. If I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow, then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. Is it enough now, O Lord? Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. 
Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Oreb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am alone, I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Some of us have been blessed with the tremendous models of what father food was meant to be. A reflection of our relationship with our father in heaven. But there are others who have not experienced that and instead have been ignored neglected, abused, or abandoned. And for those, Father's Day is anything but happy. I sincerely hope that you will allow our Heavenly Father to fill that void in your life. The world which we live in is the era of anxiety and stress. Right? (laughs) In times like this, we need to manage our own stress well and try to live a spiritually, emotionally, and physically healthy life. Today's passage shows us how God the Father restores his servant, Elijah, who was under extreme stress. We see in the passage that the great prophet Elijah is in trouble. He is depressed discouraged, mentally strained, physically drained, and spiritually burned out. He is exactly like most of us, or like me. (laughs) After his great victory on Mount Elijah must have expected the nation of Israel to experience a vast turning to the Lord. But when Zezbel, queen of Israel and wife of the king Ahab, threatened to kill him, he cracked 
under the pressure, ran south to Beersheba. And from Beersheba, he went on a day's journey into the desert. It seems totally out of character for this courageous and resolute prophet to turn and run. But when we examine our own lives, we find that we too, we too have a moment when our faith is strong and our actions are unwavering, but, but those are all too often followed by moments in which we succumb to temptation or despair. It is sadly the human history. Now, let's pay close attention to how God, our Heavenly Father, deals with his discouraged servant in the passage. First, God led Elijah to take rest and rest refreshment. Elijah fled Jezebel to save his life. But he now asks God to let him die. That is best explained by the fact that his flight from Jezebel was fueled by fear, which led to exhaustion. Elijah's stress led him to despair. Like this, our moods are profoundly affected by our physical state. Fatigue, hunger, thirst, heat, cold, etc. Eliza falls asleep in the shade of the broom tree. Then the Lord sent an angel to him and gave Elijah a very specific command in verse 5. Get up and eat, <laughs> which I can follow well. <laughs> Get up and eat. So he looked around and found a cake of bread baked over hot charcoal and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then he laid down and slept again. Then verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. Elijah revived by sleep, food, and water no longer asks to die, <laughs> but instead does as the angel asks, gets up, eats, drinks, and sets out for his journey. Now Elijah was ready to travel 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb the mountain of God. Sometimes we need to eat and sleep even more than we need to pray and read the Bible. There's a time for everything. We need some rest. We need some relaxation. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is to get up and have a good meal because you will feel so much better. Why did he go to Horeb? Because he knew Mount Sinai was the place to go to meet God. He didn't just pick out any mountain. He went back to where Moses met the Lord. 
there's a, there's a value in going back to certain places. There is a value in going back to certain milestones in your life and certain physical locations in your life. That's places where you meet, you met God in the past. Please remember God's restoration of Elijah begins with rest and restoration for the body, mind, and the soul. Second, God led Elijah to face his fears. Verse 9 says, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah was the winner of a great victory on Mount Carmel. So what is he doing in a cave hundreds of miles away? Elijah responds in verse 10. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. Here, Elijah listed the problems. All seems to be true but far from the whole truth. Elijah says, I am the only, only one left, and they are going to kill me. This is the capstone of Elijah's complaints. However, it was Jezebel, not the Israelites, who threatened to kill him. He has moved from being God-focused Two, being self-focused, and as a result, exaggerates both his own importance and the danger that he faces. Likewise, as long as you feel sorry for yourself, you will make a thousand excuses for not facing your own truthful problem. And you will never get better unless you face your fears. Third, God gave Elijah a new vision of God. When Elijah begins to wallow in self-pity, God doesn't rebuke him. Instead, God meets him in his deep despair. God just says, get up, Elijah. Son, get up. Get out of your cave. I want to show you something. Then a mighty wind tore across the face of the mountain, shattering the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, and he went out and stood in the mountain of the cave, in the mouth of the cave. Why does God put Elijah through this demonstration of divine power? The Lord wants Elijah to know that it is not in the earthquakes or the fire or the huge events where we must often encounter the Lord. We more often meet God in the small, forgotten places of life. Our problem is we want to see the earthquake. 
We want to see the fire all the time. We want a big demonstration. We want to, we want the spectacular answer to our prayers. But God says, that's not always where you are going to see me. But just to listen for the gentle whisper. See, God always speaks loud enough for the willing ear to hear. The willingness to hear God's voice is the essential, essential part here. I have already shared that I have been practicing centering prayer twice a day for the past 20 minutes, 20 <laughs> Sorry, 20 years since I was led by the Holy Spirit. During the silent prayer, my spirit can dwell in the presence of God and hear his gentle voice that can bring healing and restoration. The more I pray centering prayer, the more my spiritual reservoir within me expands and I am filled with inner strength. Finally, God gave Elijah a new mission. In verses 15 through 19, God gave some very specific missions to Elijah, which reveals that God is providing for the succession of both kings and the prophet. Hazael of Aram, today's Syria, will replace Phoenicia, which is Jezebel's country, home country. And Jehu's dynasty will overthrow King Ahab's house. God planned everything. Finally, Elisha will replace Elijah as prophet. Then God is reminding Elijah that he's not alone. Not only is God with him, God has another, how many? 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed down to Baal. Elijah has bemoaned with his status as the sole surviving faithful worshiper of God. But God now sets him straight. There are 7,000 in Israel. Presum presumably 7,000 men plus women and children who have not bowed to Baal in spite of severe pressure from Jezebel and King Ahab to do so. Now Elijah is ready to go and do the mission that God has given to him, which was not easy. He may face death, but he was no longer afraid of death. A few days ago, I heard a noise from birds chopping. So as, as I looked up at the sky, at that very moment, the mother bird suddenly threw a baby bird from out of her chest. The startled baby bird flapped its wings vigorously, and soon it was flying alongside with the mother bird. Seeing this wonderful sight, I thought that we too could become strong in faith through many trials. Just like a baby bird can fly through such a harsh test of being abandoned by a mother bird. But even while we are being tested, 
we must remember that our Heavenly Father did not forsake us, but he is supporting us and guiding us behind the scene. On this Father's Day, I would like to commend all fathers and father figures for what you have done for your family and church. I understand that sometimes it's not easy to be good and faithful father, right? <laughs> but believe me, you are not alone. Please remember that your Heavenly Father is standing right next to you, guiding you to be a good father if you ask for his help. No human father has ever shown greater tenderness or consideration or sacrificial love or deep affection for his children than God has for us. And whenever we feel stressed out or burned out, please take time to rest and eat well. It won't be helpful if you hide. Instead, be courageous to face your fears. Ask the Lord to help you to restore then the Lord will give you a new vision and mission for your fresh restart. Dear congregant, I'm going to do that, okay? <laughs> I'm going to take a vacation starting tomorrow for two weeks for my restoration. Please pray for David and I to be fully refreshed and restored to start my fourth year at Centenary United Methodist Church, I was commissioned by the bishop to come to Centenary for uh, next conference year. It's not, uh, it has not been easy, I can say that, uh, to serve during the COVID era. But I'm grateful that our church has been vital and active with the Bible studies and three teams, ministries, and missions for the last two years. I'm looking forward to serving with you another conference year. I love you all. Wonderful. <laughs> I need to hear you saying I love you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too all. Oh, yeah. Would you would you rise to sing the hymn, the closing hymn? <laughs>
I told you numerous times that, you know, take your hand. And God's holding your hand. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to let you go until you arrive at your heavenly home. You may just abandon God's hand for some time, but God will never, ever leave you alone. Let us delight in the steadfast love of God. Let us rejoice in God's glory as we rejoice in our individual and our communal. Let us remember God who guides our path, the Christ who strengthens us, and the Spirit who nurtures us. Amen. Go with God. Blessings to you into the world. Amen.